Lemmings is not a series known for its story. Considering that the first game and the more recent games hardly even attempted stories or lore, it's no wonder why. But, if you look a little deeper, you can find some lore. Very weird and disconnected lore. Let's look into it. Easily the most obvious and memorable lore in the franchise is the story of the 12 tribes of Lemmingland that started with Lemmings to <laughs> the tribes. Many generations after the first game, the Lemmings have found their promised land and settled onto every corner of the island, over time diverging into 12 distinct tribes with themes of varying ridiculousness, with each taking a piece of their guiding talisman, a powerful object with unexplored potential. All is well and good until signs of a devastating event foretold in ancient prophecies simply known as the Darkness begin to appear. The twelve tribes must meet in the middle of the island to reunite the talisman to power the Ark that they will evacuate on. This is pretty much all you get from the game itself, but that's not quite the whole story. The rest of the story isn't offloaded to the manual, as you might expect, but rather it's offloaded to an entire separate children's book. Ser seriously. The story of the Twelve Tribes of Lemming Island, or the day Jimmy McLemming wished he'd stayed in bed, is an official piece of supplemental reading for Lemmings 2 published by Psygnosis. I'm not going to go super deeply into it because a lot of the story isn't super important in the long run, but it does have some world building. Some, anyway. Like, for example, the Highland Tribe are the ones who hold the ancient prophecies, and they're the tribe the Grand Chief of all the Lemmings, plainly named Lemmy McLemming, of course, is a member of. All the other tribes are pretty much taken to their extremes, so for example, the circus lemmings are just full-on clowns all the time. The shadow run lemmings run their entire part of the island like top secret government property, etc. Anyway, the important bits of the story are the single messenger must go out and warn all the other tribes of the incoming darkness, because prophecy, of course. The only one available is Jimmy McLemming, a young lemming who is probably not qualified for this task, but they gotta make it work anyway, so he sets off on his quest, and the rest of the book is essentially just shenanigans between him and the other tribes. He successfully warns them all, and then Lemmings 2 happens. Trust me, this is marginally important later, and by later, I mean the Lemmings Chronicles would continue the tribe's arc, featuring the Lemmings coming across a beautiful archipelago of 12 islands, oh so conveniently corresponding to their 12 tribes. After dropping down, your goal as their guide is to help them settle in while dealing with the random monsters because of course there are. The game only focuses on three tribes, and while the manual claims that the others would be released on expansion discs, that didn't happen. In reality, this game was only made to get out of a contract with Psygnosis, so the other nine tribes were cast aside. Oh, speaking of the manual, did you know it contradicts the in-game intro cutscene? That's always fun, isn't it? The manual actually focuses on Jimmy McLemming, just like the book. And in the manual's version of the story, the Lemmings can tell that the islands they stumble upon have monsters on them and are far from ideal. And the only reason they land there is because, at that moment, Jimmy McLemming used up most of the talisman's power to, wait for it, bring the flavor back to his chewing gum. That's right, according to the manual, the events of Lemmings 3 are all Jimmy's fault. He didn't do it maliciously, he had no idea that reflavoring the gun would sap that much power from the talisman, but like, why tempt fate? Come on, Jimmy, you absolute buffoon. The credits do give some info as to what happened next, but it's pretty vague and, of course, incomplete. After this point, the tribe's arc was never really expanded upon. Oh sure, Love of Lemming canonically takes place 10 years after the events of Lemmings 2 and 3, even referencing Jimmy McLemming. And the game itself alludes to the tribes, as in the event you release your lemming and it doesn't die, but like mine did, it'll grow up to join one of the tribes, presumably the one it was a member of before it got brainwashed. But the game itself really isn't about the tribes at all and doesn't provide any additional detail on them. In fact, I'd argue that this game taking place after Lemmings 3 just makes things more confusing. Lemmings Tribes is a game that features the tribes prominently, obviously, but it has no story at all as far as I can tell. Who knows when it's supposed to take place? And of course, Lemmings the Puzzle Adventure features different Lemmings tribes, in fact, a lot of new ones, but they only amount to cute cosmetic differences. Like Love Lemming, the game is not about them. 
thus leaving the tribe's arc as an incomplete mess. Oh well. You don't see too many real villains in the Lemmings franchise, which isn't too surprising given that most of the time, the Lemmings' greatest enemy is themselves. However, a few games have featured an actual villain targeting the Lemmings in some way. They're typically nothing impressive, but hey, Lemmings' tiny brains can only handle so much from an antagonist. To be fair, I'm using the term villains plural rather loosely. A couple of these villains really only serve to make the plot happen. Uh, what I mean by that is that they'll start the conflict, and then they just don't do anything else. They don't actively try to stop the Lemmings from winning, per se. The wheels from Lemmings Revolution are one of these. Basically, they get a sick thrill out of seeing the Lemmings get hurt, much like some players out there, I'm sure. And eventually, they decide that, instead of simply watching them get hurt on their own misadventures, they'll capture them all, and make their own dangerous levels to put them through. And that's it. Well, to be fair to them, they did pretty much make the entire game themselves. They at least had more of a presence in the story than Polyonymous from Level Lemming. Sure, he brainwashes the orphaned lemmings, which is a reason you have to tame them in the first place, but really all he amounts to in the game is some text. Definitely the most impactful of the lemmings villains is Evil Ed from Lomax. He manages to outperform Polyonymous by brainwashing nearly all of Lemmingkind and sending his new henchmen to stop Lomax from breaking his curse. Heck, he even takes on Lomax himself in the final boss. Granted, Lomax is a platformer rather than a puzzler, which makes a final boss fight that isn't completely forced gameplay-wise a bit easier to accomplish. Still though, it's nice to see a villain have any sort of gameplay presence in a Lemmings game. Lastly, a few Lemmings games have little bits and pieces of story, lore, or otherwise something of substance that can't really connect to anything else in the franchise. For one, there's the aforementioned Lemmings Tribes, which literally centers around three of the tribes, but doesn't really offer any insight into them beyond the environments they inhabit. Lemmings Touch introduces mischievous Lemmings, who destroy the exit to a level if they reach it, and like, I just have to wonder what their deal is, you know? Why are they like this? Do they come from somewhere else? No idea. And then, there's a good old Lemmings the Puzzle Adventure. This game does, in fact, have a simple story. I don't think it launched with an intro cutscene, but somewhere along the way, this honestly kind of charming little scene was added. Somewhere along the line, the Lemmings have explored space enough to inhabit several more planets. But unfortunately, disastrously large meteors rain down and wreak havoc on all planets but their home one. The Lemmings must then navigate these planets, trying not to die, fixing up the world, and settling back in. And then, eventually, I think it just turns them exploring as far as they can. That's neat, I suppose, but like, how did any of this happen? How did we get here? Why do I even ask these questions? Eh. <sighs> the game does feature tribes, as I said earlier, and it even references the Lemmings 2 book. When you play in the tournaments, you can pick a display name from a few preset first and last names. And the default name is none other than Lemming McLemming. Jimmy McLemming is also an option, and there's also Lomax as a first name for what it's worth. It doesn't mean very much, but I think that's pretty cool. <laughs>